Hello and welcome to episode number three of this Code War series. Today we're going to take a look at another 8Q problem, but I promise we will get to 7Q very, very soon. But for today, the problem is quite simple. Just remove the spaces from a given string called x and then return the resultant string. So you guys know the drill by now. I'm going to use my own workspace using VS Code and CMD. -er. So let's get to it. Right now I'm thinking we need some way of iterating through the string x and check each letter to see if it's a space or not. So simple, let's make a for loop for letter in x. If that letter is equal to a space, then somehow remove that letter from the string. But then I realized that strings are an immutable object type in Python, you cannot change them. So what I'm going to simply do to to avoid this is right from the beginning, change x from a list, I mean, change x from a string into a list. And in fact, what that's going to do, let me just comment this out for now, and return x right here, I'll show you through a test case what we have at the moment. So actually, if we print uh, no space and put in hello world, whoop, let's save that and run this in Python, the file name is 003 underscore remove that pi, we can see we have a list where every single character of string x is its own individual item. So now we can run this for loop here, get rid of this return. So we can run this for loop and say, if letter is a space, we need to remove it. So we get the name of the list, which is x, we run pop, which means we want to get rid of something. And we need to pass in the index of the item that we want to get rid of. And right now we have uh, letter, we want to get rid of letter, but we need to find out the index of letter somehow. And there's a few ways we can do this. One way is through a built in method in Python. So if you want to get this, uh, if you want to get the index of letter, what we can actually just do is put index around letter. And we got to put in the name of the list that we want to search. So we want to get the index of the item letter from the list called x. And this should work if I return x at the very end. This should give us the outcome that we want. And as you can see, the space that was here before is totally gone. And of course, we need to give it as a string. So we can run something called the join method. So assign x to I'll explain what this is doing. Uh, what is it x? So it basically what this method the join method does is it takes in a list or any iterable as its argument, and it joins together every single item by, by whatever you pass into the string here. So in fact, if I pass in an exclamation mark, what we'll see is every single character is separated by an exclamation mark. And what we want to do is have nothing here, because we just want to have the word Hello World. And I can make this as long as I want. My name is Code Warrior. And it should do exactly what what we want it to do. And that works perfectly fine. And you know, if I pass this into whoa, if I copy this and pass it into here, and I run the examples, they should run, oh, blah, 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 JLB should equal that I wonder why it's not equaling that let me just check that within here. So let me just pass in the example. Boom. Let's see what happens. Huh? For some reason, the space isn't working. And a reason for that is because the way I've indexed this is a little bit um, not the not the best way, because the index method, because in something like this, where we have two different um, spaces, or more than two spaces, I think that's four separate spaces. When we say get the index of space, it doesn't know which space to give us because there's four of them. So a better way to implement this would be have uh, four I in range, and we go from zero to len of x, because well, because we wanted to iterate x number of times, I need the closing bracket there. What I can do here is if instead of letter do if x open square brackets and I which just gives us the ith item of x. And we can just simply plug in I over here. And that should give us not the right thing. I wonder what's causing that to happen. Let's take a look x into len x. So let me just put in a print statement here just to do a bit of, a bit of debugging. And let me just print a 
just anything. So it does it multiple times and then it crashes at the very end. That is curious. I wonder why that's happening. Len of X. Oh, it's because we're popping stuff that it's not happy about the fact that we're popping it. So a way to get around this could be just having a new list all together called out or output, short for output, and say, if this is not a space, just append it to out x uh, square brackets i, just append that to out, and we're gonna run the join function on out, reassign that to out, and return out. And this should work, I think. There we go. So if we run this, well, I keep doing that today. If we run that over here, we should not face any problems. There we go. But the thing is, in Python, all of this could be done very, very quickly or a lot quicker than it is done over here. So instead of running all these lines of code, let me just comment these out for now. Um, what's going on? There we go. And whoop. Yeah. And let me just say, I could actually do this in one line using a built in method called replace. So let's just write return. And what we want to do is pass in the string x. And we can just type in dot replace. And what this does is it takes in two arguments. Argument a will be what you want to replace and b will be what you want to replace it with. So if I type in space, I want to get rid of all the spaces, I want to change all the spaces into empty strings. So you'll see here that it'll actually work just as well. So if I just copy this over into here, get rid of all of that, simply one line of code will do the job. And that's the beauty of Python, something that you know, you can do things in many different ways. And it's just good to know these different methods that Python has to offer. So if we actually officially attempt this now, and how do I submit? Where's the submit button? Uh, I wonder where the submit button actually is. There we go, submit final. Submit in your final solution. And there we go, guys. That is episode number three wrapped up today. Hopefully, you've learned a few different things today with the join and the list function and how the indexing works in Python and this new replace method that we're learning today. So thanks for watching. If you learned something, be sure to hit that like button and tell me in the comments down below. If you know of any way I can improve this series, this is still very much in its early stages. So I'm looking for feedback. Please tell me in the comment section down below. And thank you for watching. And until the next video, uh, keep coding.